Welcome to Behind the Mic, the deep dive behind radio theology. Here are your hosts, Darren Earlywine, Lisa Graft, and Ryan Allward. I'm one of the things that I love about Jesus is that he's just he's willing to meet us and willing to meet you where you are, what you're in, and not give you dogma, not give you doctrine, but give give you himself. Yeah. I love that. Welcome back to Behind the Mic, the spiritual deep dive episode of Radio Theology for the week of December 15th. Ryan, we are clicking right along, man. We are, man. That was a great show today. I really, really enjoyed it. Uh, we had some crazy calls. Yeah. We had an elf uh, from the North Pole, Santa's Workshop. That who, doesn't happen that often. Who had, who had found Jesus yeah. from a Bible study that he was doing. Well, evidently uh, <laughs> from some uh, South Pole missionary. Missionary elves. That's made, quite a journey. Made the long journey, yeah. Pole to pole. Yeah, pretty awesome. Shared the gospel with him, which he accepted. Called in, though, because he had some questions about how Santa Claus and Jesus uh, can live in the tension of one another. It is interesting that Jesus gets a bad rap, mm-hmm. right? Oh, yeah. Jesus, he's so, you know, we've progressed past that. He's so judgmental. He's not inclusive. You yeah. know what I mean? He's just it's one way to Jesus. Yeah. Santa, yeah, greatest guy ever. Sure. Jolly old Saint Nick. Mm-hmm. But... If we really examine the facts here, as our elf friend did for us, yeah, Santa has a list, right? Checks it twice, yeah. Evidently, the elf friend said he checks it multiple, multiple times, times. Yeah. yeah. And what happens if you're on the list, Ryan? Well, you're screwed. Yeah. I mean, you're you get I think coal. Yeah. You get shame. Yeah. Guilt. You're on the naughty list. Fear. He knows when you're sleeping. Yeah. He knows when you're awake. Yeah. He knows if you've been bad or good. So please be. Good for goodness sake. Yeah. Yeah. Jesus says, I don't have a list. Right. Right. Now, I do have, we talked about in the show, the, the Lamb's Book of Life, where once you receive the free gift yes. of God's forgiveness through Jesus, yes. your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Yes. Not to be erased. Correct. So you make the list, and you actually make the list because you're naughty. Right. <laughs> in spite of your naughtiness. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Jesus you're you are we are all on the naughty list. Yes. Doesn't matter. Yeah. We still get in. Mm-hmm. We're still loved. Yep. We're still forgiven. Yes. We can still have our name put in the Lamb's Book of Life. He took our punishment upon himself. He literally died. Yeah. So that we might live. Yeah. Santa's Life to the full. Santa's just morbidly obese. Yeah. For millennia. Yeah. Yeah. Doesn't work out a day in his life. Santa's got heart disease <laughs> and just looking for a reason to give you coal. Right. Yeah. But he comes off scot-free uh-huh. around the Christmas yeah, season. Yeah, and apparently watches you every night when you sleep. What a freak. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, it is interesting. <laughs> uh, you know, looking yeah. at that, uh, if you're very, very, very new to faith, yes. uh, thank you. Thank you. Or maybe you're, you're, you're like, I'm not sure about this whole right. faith Jesus thing. Right, right, right. Thank you for downloading this episode yeah. listening to Radio Theology. But just take a minute and let that kind of sink in mm-hmm. of how long you've been totally cool with Santa Claus. Yeah. And the offer there is pretty one-sided. Right. Yeah. Cookies and milk. Jesus is like, hey, come follow me. All you who are weary and I'll give you rest. Yeah. And you're like, ah, I don't know about you, man. Yeah. I don't know. While you were yet my enemy. Yes. I, I died for I you. I died for you. Cool. Get out of my way. Just I'll call on you when I need you. Yeah. But could you give me some gifts? Yeah. That'd be great. Yeah. I just know. Could you give me stuff? Please get me the job promotion. <laughs> Stay out of my life though. Yeah. Otherwise. And and that that was just the fun opening to the show. Although that is a really deep thought, I hope you do ponder a little yes. bit. But we spent some time today talking about of of around this idea of explaining Jesus. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because in that right, you can explain Santa, and everybody goes, "Yeah, cool, cool." And mm-hmm. then you, if you don't explain Jesus well, which a lot of times he's not been explained well, right? Because a lot of times I think we actually explain Jesus as if he's Santa Claus. Mm. Right, like, well, no. The, the the deal about Jesus is you got to make sure you do all the right stuff. Yeah, yeah. And if Santa's looking at least at Christmas time, you know Jesus is looking Agreed. all the time. Don't let him see what you did. Right. Yeah, he's gonna throw a lightning bolt at you if you get out of line. How many times have people said, like, oh, man, the first time I went to church, I thought the place was gonna burn down. Right. Yeah. Right. Because they think that Jesus is like Santa, and he's been explained like that. Mm-hmm. Like, hey, he's watching your life. He can't look upon your sin. Mm-hmm. It re- he's really angry with you. He's looking for, you know, he really loves to send people to hell. Yeah. You know what I mean? He's very exclusive. You know, I mean? you have to, it's the very narrow road. You have to get it all right. You know, and even, I think there's times we take things that Jesus said, like when Jesus said, hey, unless your righteousness or, or your 
uh, you, your your right living, right? If if it doesn't exceed that of the the scribes and the Pharisees, mm-hmm. then you, you you have no place in the kingdom of God. And we hear things like that, and we're like, oh my gosh, mm-hmm. Jesus! Like these dudes, they're spent their whole life trying to follow the rules. Yeah. If I've got to surpass their rightness, mm-hmm. I'm totally screwed. Yeah. And I think he's essentially saying to us, you know, by your own standard, you will always fail. Yeah. What he was trying to say is, hey, guess what, guys? You don't. You have no shot. Yeah, but that's what I'm here for. That's why I'm here. This is there's no scorecard. We're not yeah. keeping score anymore. Right, right. It, you you can't do it. Therefore, I've come to to stand in the place and actually mm-hmm. allow you to have the the righteousness of God. We may not use you may not you that use that word a lot, and I think a lot of times we hear that and we think it means like we think of holiness or perfection. Yeah, we hear self righteousness a lot. You yeah, know, that person is so self righteous. But I love yeah. the fact that when Jesus is saying that, that we now, the Bible tells, says that that we have the righteousness of Christ. The word righteous, I've been I've been reading recently, and, and every time I read the word righteous, I read the word in right relationship. Mm, I like that. Which is what it actually means. Yeah. And I love that fact because what it means is what I need, what you need in your life, you need the righteousness of Christ, meaning you need the right relationship Mm-hmm. of Jesus mm-hmm. to who well because of what Jesus does he he erases the the sin debt and space we have between us and God the father and he allows us to have a right relationship with God and then from that he wants to learn he wants to actually allow us to learn to to love like he does and allow to transform our hearts so that we have righteousness in our relationships mm which doesn't mean we're perfect, mm-hmm. but it means we're moving towards our relationships being right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And if we could, that's why we do this show, to hopefully try to, to explain to you more the true character of who Jesus really is. Mm. And we used, um, Ryan, you got a chance this past week to uh, to to do a show with John McLaughlin, yeah. uh, Dave Barnes, Matt Wirtz, and a, a younger guy named Jordy Searcy, yeah. S-E-A-R-C-Y. Uh, he's from Nashville. He's a singer-songwriter. And all those guys are believers, um, and it was such a fun show, man. The guys on on stage was a blur. It was just a party, but backstage was so fun, and uh, getting to catch up with some of the guys whose music I've been listening to for you know over a decade was really a special moment. But getting to know Jordy and hearing this one song that he played was really powerful. It's called Explaining Jesus. You can get it on Spotify, wherever you get your music. And you brought it up this week, and it really queued up our desire to have the whole show yes. orbit around this thought, because yes. you said... When he goes into this song, it it changed the atmosphere. Yeah, it really does. I mean, you could hear a pin drop, you know, and and people are just wiping away tears in this song, and it's this beautiful, beautiful song about. Um, I think the the first the first line is if you're gay and over eighty five, and you've thought that your whole life that when God made you, he just screwed up, you know. And he goes on to explain all these different scenarios. There's like a Southern Belle who's uh, what's the word? You were born and bred for show and tell. I mean, it's a it's a really good lyric. Oh yeah, he's, I mean, his, the lyrics the the lyrics work in this song is beautiful too. But the 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 hook is I'm so sorry for uh for what you've heard. Um, we're broken poets with broken words. Uh, you know, basically saying I, I it, it appears as though no one has explained Jesus to you, mm-hmm. and that he's apologetic in a way. Yeah. Uh, for saying I'm sorry that you have been misinformed. You haven't been told the right story about what is true about God and what is true about you. And it's this beautiful song. We featured it all throughout the show yeah. uh, this week. You can go uh, to radiotheology.com and you can listen to it there. Um, but yeah, it was it was this cool moment that as we were planning this show, I just, I don't know what prompted me, but just to play the song for everybody. And we're like, oh man, we need to talk about that. Yeah, um, It's a really beautiful message. Hey, here's what I want to do. Uh, since we're teeing it up right now, I want to take a moment right now and I just want to play the song in its entirety mm-hmm. uh, here on the podcast, uh, let you listen to it. Uh, I know uh, it's gonna it's gonna um, it's gonna inspire you. I know it's gonna touch you uh, in a great way in your emotions, but also in your spirit. So here's uh here's the song explaining Jesus by Jordy Searcy uh, in its entirety. Here, real quick. If you're gay and over 85 And you fought for your whole life But when God made you, you just messed up If you've been raised a southern belle Born and bred for show and tell 
But you lie down feeling never good enough I'm so sorry for how it's been We're broken artists with broken pens We paint our pride and call it truth I'm sorry no one explained Jesus to you porch was a pastor that just wanted to be right and if you really want to pray to him but you're never sure he's listening because who could forgive what you did last night i'm so sorry for what you've heard with broken poets with silly words we paint agendas Call it truth I'm sorry no one explained Jesus to you so sorry for all the wrongs we're broken singers with broken songs we paint our pride and call it truth i'm sorry no one explained jesus to you i'm sorry no one explained jesus to you Sorry no one explained Jesus to you such a good song man oh man it's great man it's a beautiful tune i mean this kid's 25 i call him a kid you know he's 25 he's just got some amazing things to say the rest of his music is great too and he is a believer um not all of his songs are necessarily worship songs but um it's just such a good beautiful way of saying that to uh maybe someone who's not a believer or someone who's on the fence or maybe someone who's been uh abused or, or mistreated by the church or by someone in the church. It's just a great, great statement. I love it. And I think, you know, one of the things um, that I, I want us to try to do, it's one of the things I try to do in my life is take these, take big theological, bi- uh, biblical ideas mm-hmm. that people go like, I don't know what the freak that is. Or yeah. those ideas that have been, I think, like you said, right, have been abused mm-hmm. or or misapplied to people. And yeah. they, they, they remain to be, uh, they, they, they live as barriers between us and mm-hmm. God. And one of them is this idea of repentance. Mm. You can go to, you know, go out in a street corner somewhere and write you people with these big signs that say, repent for the kingdom of God is here. And, you know, mm-hmm. and repent, repent. And you're like, oh, I think that means I have to feel terrible about myself. Yeah. And, and it's, it's a major big thing and it's a scary thing. And, and I don't really want to do it. Yeah. And I remember a couple of years ago, somebody to, you know, brought me to the understanding of, you know, that. To, to repent, it actually literally means either to turn directions or to change your mind. Mm. And that, like, as I started to get my mind around, like, what's Jesus, Jesus is saying? Hey, like, the kingdom of God is at hand. Like, there's a new opportunity, a new way to live. Mm-hmm. And what I want to invite you to consider is to change your mind mm-hmm. about who God is. Like, Jesus is saying, hey, the experience of my life. Mm-hmm 
is going to explain the heart of God. Mm. And when you, when you have a proper explanation of God's love for you and his reality and, and his and his presence and all these things, yeah. then what I want to invite you to do is is the time it's time. It's time for you to change your mind yeah. about God. Yeah. Maybe that's where you're at. Maybe listen to that song. You're like, I, you, you, you heard yourself in one of those lines. I, I love Jordy's spirit in the song of just when he says, "I'm sorry." Mm-hmm. And and from our heart to you know, to yours, if if you've had that experience and and you've maybe tiptoed your way into this podcast, yeah, because you're like, the way I think about God is he's mad at me and all these different things, or he doesn't approve of this of me, or. Whatever it is, maybe you heard yourself in that song. We want to say we're sorry mm-hmm. that no one explained Jesus to you. And what we hope you discover as you listen to the podcast, we have these conversations, is you come to a place where you go, you know what? I, I actually think maybe I, I had gotten it wrong. Yeah. And I'm at a place where I'm, I'm able to, to you know, humbly but, but courageously say, I think I want to change my mind right. about God if, if that explanation is actually true. Mm-hmm. One of the things I love in uh, one of the stories in scripture after Jesus has been resurrected uh, is that he appears before his disciples and Thomas, who gets kind of a bad rap is, you know, doubting Thomas because he's like, Hey, I'm not going to believe everything else you guys are believing until I touch, touch his hands, see it, see the wounds, you know, till he's, till I've got proof. Yes. Essentially paraphrasing right there. And what I love about Jesus is he doesn't climb on top of a mountain and say, Hey Thomas, way down there, like strive your way up to me. Yeah. And right when you get to the summit, I'm going to disappear and you're going to have to find me again. What he does is he appears to him and he says, Hey, like examine, go yeah. ahead, touch, touch the hands, like put, put your finger in my side where they, they speared me to yeah. see if I was dead or not. Yeah. You know, like go ahead, like search all you need to search. And I love that, that he literally opens his hands mm. to Thomas, who is a guy who's been following him around seeing him every single day, eating with him. I mean, uh, you know, seeing these miracles performed that we just read about 2000 years later. And he's, and he's still again, opening his hands to this guy again, mm-hmm. saying, Hey, let, let's start from the basics. If you need the basics, let's go back to the basics here, Thomas together. Yeah. yeah. And I love that about him, that he's, that he is approachable and he is accessible. Um, and, and, and he, he, Thomas then goes on to bring the gospel, the good news of who Jesus is, yeah. this this hope of the world to, I think, India, like billions of Christians in India are because of Thomas then getting what he needed from yeah. Jesus. Like Jesus met Thomas individually where he was, yeah. he met, and he spoke to him in a language that he's going to understand. And that experience transformed Thomas's direction of his life, where Absolutely. he's like, I- I'm going to go put my life, everything that this just changed. I now have to go share with other people. Yeah. Um, that's what I just, I'm one of the things that I love about Jesus is that he's just, he's willing to meet us and willing to meet you where you are, what you're in and not give you dogma, not give you doctrine, but give him, give you himself. Yeah. I love that. You know, I think, um, the, the further you you walk in a relationship with Jesus, I, I agree with you, right? He always wants to meet you where you really are, mm-hmm. meet you most fully there, right? Yeah. And um, I can look back and think of like major things that that uh, have progressed as far as my understanding. Mm-hmm. Like when I came to faith, I, I felt like actually the 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 explanation of Jesus and what it was like to follow Him that I received as a kid. Yeah. I grew up in a very um, what's called the holiness denomination. Okay. Um, which basically taught that there was a point in time where you um, were to strive to become what they would call, what they called entirely sanctified. That there was a second work of grace, like God's grace came into your life, but then there'd be a second move of grace, which purified your heart to the point where you, you could sin, but you wouldn't knowingly sin because you had been entirely sanctified. Okay. I think I'm tracking. Okay. So, Imagine the struggle of a 13, 14, 16 year old boy. Yeah. Trying to be like, I love Jesus by my heart, so my strength. I want to do this. But if I'm sinning often Mm -hmm. and feeling like every time I sin, it's just another proof that I haven't arrived. I'm Mm -hmm. not entirely sanctified. Mm -hmm. And very potentially, I'm losing my salvation after every Mm -hmm. sin. Wow. Like, I got to put Jesus back on the cross to atone for that sin eight seconds ago. Constantly. Yeah. 
Like, that's the way Jesus was explained to me when I was growing up. And one of the joys of my life has been that that Jesus, like I love what you said, he doesn't give you a dogma, he doesn't just give you a doctrine. Like, Jesus isn't a set of beliefs. He's right. not, he's not, you know, the pillars of truth that we believe. It's just these things. Right. He's actually alive. Mm-hmm. And he can send his spirit to live, the Holy Spirit to live within us, which, which, which God tells us is, uh, is the teacher, right? Mm-hmm. Is the, the idea that even if you're at a place where you know what, like you've got some stuff wrong. I had some major stuff wrong with the explanation of who Jesus was as it came to me. Yeah. And I love the fact that, that, that I've, I've, as I have sought him as a friend, as mm-hmm. a savior, as a God, uh, as, as my heavenly father, like he has progressively ex- continued to explain himself to me more and more. Like, mm-hmm. no, son, you actually got it wrong. Like, that's not how it works. And yeah. Let, let me let me show you truth. Let me guide you into a new level of understanding. Um, do you have something maybe maybe in your in mm-hmm. your journey with Jesus where you, were, you know what th- those were some things I got that I used to have wrong? Yeah. I mean, I grew up in a really interesting kind of a denominational mutt uh, of, of an upbringing. Um, my parents were not Christians when they. Uh, got married per se. I think they grew up in the church. Um, they were open to going to church. It was the thing that we do yeah. because we're from this city and this is who where we go. Our, yeah. our ancestors were Presbyterian. That's where we're going to church. Um, but both of them had a very profound literal coming to Jesus moment um, before I was even born. And so they in their adulthood were were fed really solid doctrine and teaching uh, in a in a Baptist community in San Diego, California, where I was born at the time. Then we moved to Germany. Then we moved to Pascagoula, Mississippi, like literally the most Southern Baptist church you can go to. Mm-hmm. Um, then we go up to New England because my dad was in the Navy and we got to go up to Rhode Island because there's water up there. It's like, okay. And we find ourselves in this evangelical friends community that's like an offshoot of Quakerism. And so like I was exposed at a really early age. Yeah, like the charcuterie board of, oh, of yeah. a Christian faith. That's a perfect way to put it, yeah. Like I had the picture Bible, and we paid like biblical trivial pursuit, like which I probably crushed as a kid because I love trivia. Oh, I'm but, sure. So like all this stuff, like all this knowledge from different angles, you know, and then we end up at a non-denominational church here in, in uh, Indianapolis. Um kind of rested on the laurels of my faith. I used my faith as a, as a basically a license to do anything I wanted to in college. Hmm. Like my Bible was like a paperweight. It just collected dust on my bedstand in college. And I was like, well, my Bible's in my room. So Jesus is going to forgive me for what I did. You know, didn't grow at all. Just like totally blank check. No problem. Blank check. He's fine. He's got my back. Just an insurance policy. Right. Um, but really it wasn't until, I think probably my thirties, which I'm in, I'm in the later, you know, thirties right now. But like when I was in direct ministry with, uh, young life, the, the ministry that, uh, I, I worked for, for five years here in, in Indy, really getting to know high school kids and, and trying to help them process life, you know, and, and all these spiritual questions that they would have and help them kind of construct a theology I kind of had to deconstruct my own. Mm. I kind of had to yeah. see my own system and worldview kind of fall by the wayside and say, what, what does this young person need right now? And typically what they would need would be reassurance that it's okay to have questions and it's okay to doubt and it's okay to believe really firmly and it's okay to believe different things than your parents do or that your friends do or that your boyfriend does. And for me, that was a really interesting season of life spiritually speaking, where God really, really showed up in some amazing ways. Like, the, I mean, when, you, when you're working with high school students for as long as I was, you're, I, I got kind of spiritually bruised, emotionally bruised by a lot of the things that it dug up from my own high school experience. But in some cases, man, I mean, you know this, but you may not if you're listening, but um, there was a season, man, where it seemed like every kid that I came across was depressed, anxious, wanted to kill themselves or hurt themselves. Some actually attempted to, did not succeed, fortunately. But it was just this season of heaviness and darkness where, uh, to your point earlier, God met me where I was just as I was trying to meet these kids where they were. Mm. And um, I think, you know, having kids also, I mean, we've got my, my wife, Lauren, and I have a five-year-old and a th- almost three-year-old. That really has helped me understand the the, the fatherness of mm-hmm. God, the mm-hmm. loving father aspect of God. Yeah. And that, 
I would do anything for my kids. I would lay down my life for my kids. I would, I want to provide for them. I want to protect them. I want to comfort them. And it's just really helped me in this season of being a dad, uh, just learning more of the heart of God and not just for my kids. It, it is kind of weird to say, Lord, you know, my kids better than I do. Hmm. I have to trust you with, with my son or my daughter yeah. beyond my ability to love them. I have to trust that whatever happens to them, as long as I'm here is going to be okay because you're in charge and I'm not. Yeah. Uh, these, these kids are our gifts that I get to steward and, and point to you, but they're not mine per se. Like I can't control, I, I don't own them. Yeah. They come from me, but ultimately they come from you. And so it's been a really good season where God has uh, just illuminated a lot of the brokenness in my own life where he's helping me, uh, <laughs> relinquish control yeah. and just kind of say, man, this, this is all, this is all on you. And I need to come to him way more often. I think as a guy, I often want to be like, I got this. What's the problem? What needs fixing? Let's fix it. I can rely on my own ability and strength and charisma and energy a lot. Uh, but sometimes I fool myself that all of this is because of me, you know, and I can forget. And in those moments where he comes in and he, he gently corrects me, it's beautiful. It's really beautiful. It's sometimes it's painful. Because it's like, ah, it's not what I want to hear right now, but it's exactly what I need to hear and what I need to listen to. I think I, I'm one of the words that's jumped out to me as you, as you were finishing there was the idea of like the control piece. Yeah. Like that you're realizing, God's leading you to a place where you're realizing you need to give up some control. Yeah. I think where we get God wrong is we think that he, that he is uh, um, fixated on controlling us. Mm. Right? Like, he wants to control us, mm-hmm. and when we when he can't control us and get us to do what we're supposed to do, then he wants to punish us. Right, and it's like, no, actually, he he wants to actually like grow you to the place where you you can be trusted to control yourself. Yeah, or come to a place where you can relinquish some control and and trust him. Yeah. Not that he's trying to take it from you. Right. I think about you said, like, as you said, you know, that you, you know, when you were in college, it was kind of like your insurance policy, like a blank yeah. check. Yeah. And, and I think the interesting thing is like, it actually was mm. <laughs> like, yeah, you, you had a blank check of like, mm-hmm. I, I do whatever I want and Jesus was still love me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's, it's totally correct. Yeah. And I think where something where, where I've had to be, uh, to get to be, have Jesus explained better is. My thought was, no, you don't have a blank check. It's all this sin is racking up, and it's and it's going into an account, mm. and all these things are, are kicking you out of your son being in a relationship with mm-hmm. Jesus. Then you got to, like you said, you got to crucify Jesus again, and he's really yeah. mad because you're screwing all this up. And yeah. you realize, like, no, like actually, like let's go back to that righteousness thing. Mm-hmm. Is Jesus the whole time wanted to say, hey Ryan, you know what I'd love to teach you? I'd love to teach you how to live a righteous life, mm-hmm. meaning. I'd love to teach you how to have great relationships. Mm-hmm. And so it's like, man, like when you're going out getting totally like hammered mm-hmm. and then doing this with this person or saying these things or hurting these relationships or, or like it really not going well in your classes or like yeah. whatever it is that you're doing, right. That is having adverse effects upon relationships, which that's, that's that sinful things. That's what they do. They, they compromise our potential and they, and they, mm. they also damage our mm. relationships. So Jesus is saying, "Hey, man, I'd, man, I'd love for you to live a, a righteous life, meaning that all your your relationships would be right. Yeah, and I'd love for you to have the to live life to the full, to your greatest potential. Yeah, but if you don't want to, like, I'm not, I'm not going to control you. Sure, and I still love you. So it's like, yeah, you have a blank check. Mm-hmm. Now, does that mean that all of our actions don't actually have repercussions? Not at all. No, they do. Right. Yeah. Like, and and I think that's where." We get obsessed thinking about, and and I hate it when God is explained this way, but that he is the punisher in our life. I'm reading a book right now that's mm. changing a lot of how I, it's reaffirming, I guess I would say, how I how I understand Jesus right now. It's a book called Unpunishable by uh, Danny Silk. Freaking love everything he writes. And this is new for me. Mm-hmm. As I said, as thing as I'm learning that it's like, like Jesus doesn't punish us. And like, you may say that and be like, yeah, he does. God does punish us. No, no, he doesn't. Mm. Jesus allows us to have the freedom 
to experience the repercussions of the consequences of the decisions we make. Mm-hmm. But his heart is not that is not a, a punisher. Mm-hmm. That's not the role he's playing in our life. Like that's not the role I want to play with my kids. Yeah. Oh, I can't come tell my dad when I've screwed up. Why? Because he's going to punish me. Yeah. Well, that's going to guarantee a lot of distance between my kids, my sons mm-hmm. and I. Yeah. I want to be their life consultant. Right. Right. To help them understand what it means to live a free and wise life and experience the 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 rightness of all relationships because that's where the sweetness of life is found. Mm. And I want to guide them into that same way yeah. Jesus does. And when if you've experienced him and and as you think of Jesus, he's not Santa, maybe he's more like to come back to the show, maybe mm-hmm. he's more the Krampus. <laughs> Yeah, our friend Hans from Germany talking yeah. about the evil half demon, half goat sidekick to Saint Nicholas. Dude, uh, I saw <laughs> we went to the German market last year, Julie and I. Yeah. They had a life size Krampus. Dude, it's crazy. It was the scariest thing I've yeah. ever seen in my life. Yeah. If you don't know what the Krampus is, Google it. In Germany, he is this half demon, half goat. Yeah. That if kids are on the naughty list, uh-huh. he beats them with sticks. Yeah. And he kidnaps some. Yeah, he basically puts them in a sack and takes them to uh the woods which then leads to like the underworld so it's like it's it's like you better not pout you better not cry you better you know whatever it is be be good yeah on steroids or krampus is, or going, krampus to... is going to destroy you and honestly dude, i think a lot of times if you ask somebody <laughs> hey what do you think about god what do you think about jesus yeah they would describe yeah, the krampus for sure well, this or, is... or if not if not jesus some of his followers yes are krampus well and yeah. that's that's a tough part is there yeah. are a lot of christians who actually have acted more like Krampus, thinking they're representing Jesus. Correct. And if that's you, what you've experienced, along with Jordy Searcy, we want to say, yeah, I'm sorry. Yes. But he's not the Krampus, and he's not Santa Claus. He's about a bazillion times better mm-hmm. than all of those. And so, you know, we need to land the, the plane here with this episode, but I, I hope we've given you something to think about, something to pray about. Mm-hmm. I hope the song today was encouraging to you. Because if there are things in your life that aren't leading you towards more faith and hope and love and peace and patience and kindness and goodness, and, and, and those things are tied to thoughts and beliefs that you may have about Jesus, then you may have got it wrong. Mm-hmm. I want to encourage you to, to ask Jesus, Jesus, could you begin explaining yourself to me better or in more in depth or in a way that I can understand? And he may send people to your life. He may send podcasts to your life. He may just send his very spirit to guide and direct you in truth. Uh, But that's our hope for you because we know as you begin to understand who Jesus really is and experience him for who he is as a living God that loves you, that died for you, that wants to to guide you in life, uh, you're going to experience that he is near you, not far away from you. He's going to, you're going to experience that he's so for you, not against you. Mm -hmm. And he really has created you on purpose and for purpose. And uh, we want to help you on that journey. Uh, If you have questions, thoughts, Please reach out to us. Uh, you can email Ryan, I, uh, or Lisa, just at Darren Ryan or Lisa at blackbirdmission.com, or you can send a comment or a message on radiotheology.com. Uh, we would love to interact with you. We're praying for you. Uh, we believe in you, and uh, we appreciate you listening again uh, to this episode of Behind the Mic. Thanks for listening to Behind the Mic. For more episodes, go to radiotheology.com. <laughs>